Welcome, welcome. Welcome to our weekly Facebook Live. So good to see you guys again. Come on in. You are here with Own Again. I am Gersha Porter, the CEO of Porter Premier Homes of Cummings and Company Realty. If you can hear me, jot it in the chat. I can hear you. Welcome to Own Again. I help eliminate confusion for buyers and sellers by giving them key strategies to unlock resources, to buy their dream home, or to sell their property. And I'm here today to share some more information with you, hopefully some valuable information with you today. Hey, welcome. Welcome, welcome, Joe. Thanks so much. I appreciate you being a part of my tribe. I'd like to ask everyone when you join, please do give give StreamYard permission to access your name and your picture by clicking on the link. That way um, I could have a good conversation with you guys and I know who's talking with me and who's following back. So thank you so much. Hey, Monique. Thank you again. I'm glad that you can hear me. Thank you for joining us today for Own Again. So it is our weekly Facebook Live. It's five o'clock here on the East Coast. You guys may not have known, but I was on the West Coast last Wednesday and it was a little tricky trying to get everything uh, in order, but Hopefully you couldn't tell, but I was uh, in a different time zone. So I'm happy to be back here uh, today and I have some valuable information I want to share with you guys. Today we're going to talk a little bit about budgeting. So feel free to share this video with your friends and family by just clicking the bottom and sharing the video so they can join in and listen to some of this valuable information we're going to be talking about today. So let's dive right in. Uh, we're going to be talking today about make your money work for you with monthly budgeting. Now, Many of you know, if you've been following me, that this actually is your 18 for me in real estate. So I'm very happy to be able to share my experience um, as a real estate professional with my friends, my family, my current clients and my clients to be. And so anyone who's listening in, um, just so you know, I am here in the Baltimore metropolitan area for almost two decades. Uh, in the real estate arena, and I'm super excited to share what I've learned, what I've been trained to do, and today I'm going to put on my financial coach hat. So those of you who um, remember last year, I was certified as a Ramsey, in terms of Dave Ramsey, Ramsey Certified Financial Coach. And so I'm going to be sprinkling some of that information in as I come to you weekly. So today we're going to be talking about budgeting and managing your money. Whether you are now a homeowner or you're looking to be one, I'm praying that this information will um, be of value to you as we move forward to get on top of our budgets this year. Okay, so... Getting pre-approved for a home is an awesome, awesome step. And there are uh, some of you who are listening in who are planning to buy a home and you've moved forward to get pre-approved already. If you're already a homeowner, that's amazing as well. You've gone through that process. But now it is time to manage your finances for the long run. That's what we want to talk about today. How do you do that? So for those of you who have not already purchased a home and you're going through the process to get pre-approved, you may then know that the formula for figuring out how much you should have as your goal of your monthly income to purchase a home. So let me say that another way. When you're trying to figure out, hey, well, how much, you know, how much house can I afford? How much monthly payment can I afford? You want to look at what you bring home, your take home income every month, and your monthly mortgage payment should be around 25% of that. Okay, that's a that's a a, um, a guide. Okay, and there are some families who chose not to use that. They may only choose to use one income. Um, they may choose to go 
20% of their monthly income because only you know what else you have outside of paying a mortgage and utilities that you are responsible for. So this is a guide. So experts do recommend that your mortgage payment be about 25% of your take home after everything comes out of your check, what you bring home. Okay. So let's just talk about budgeting. What is budgeting? What is budgeting? Budgeting really is a process of creating a plan to spend your money. Yeah. And spending your money also includes savings. Okay. So it's a spending, it's a spending plan. The money comes in and what are you going to do with it? And that's called a budget. Nothing complicated about it. People call it the B word. They're all scared about it. And don't be scared about it. It's, it's a part of life and it really should be. If you're not um, apprehensive about creating a budget and sticking with one, you will see that this is the piece that will continue to move you towards financial freedom. So creating that spending plan allows you to determine in advance, that's the key, in advance, whether you'll have enough money to do the things you need to do or that you would like to do, okay? So simply says, according to Google, budgeting is just balancing your expenses with your income. And this is something that definitely should be looked at before you venture into owning a home. And once you do own a home, this is something that you should either take a look at every beginning of the year so that you can figure out, hey, I'm going to have this budget. These are some things I plan to do this year. How will it fit in with my regular expenses? So what is budgeting? That's what budgeting is. Just creating that spending plan and sticking with it. So the first thing you want to do is just get familiar with your income and your recurring expenses from a monthly perspective. So you're going to jot down the money that comes in every month. Not everybody gets money only from their job. Wherever your income is coming from, wherever that money comes from every month, put that down on a piece of paper. Then you want to talk about what are my expenses every month? Basic stuff. What could be some examples of expenses every month? Just drop it in the chat. We know that you're going to have a mortgage payment. If you don't own a home, you're going to have rent. What else would you find that would be a regular occurrence? How much money you have coming in every month versus how much money you're going to spend? What kinds of things are you spending your money on aside from your mortgage payment or your rent? Those are the things we're going to put in our budget. So give me some examples. Just jot it in, drop it in the chat of some things that you would be paying or attending to on a regular basis with your income. So utilities, thanks for that. Utilities, those would be things like your gas, your electric. Um, if you're in a neighborhood where you pay for trash pickup, you would need to do that. A water bill. There's some people in apartments that the water bill is not a part of their expense. When they purchase a home, yep, you now need to pay the water bill. So those are some of the things you're going to find out. Um, insurance. Absolutely, Monique. Thanks for that. Car insurance. If you're a renter, please do have renter's insurance. When you're a homeowner, you have homeowner's insurance. Sometimes that's a part of your mortgage payment and sometimes it's not. Taxes are a part of what we pay on a monthly basis if you're a homeowner and it may be in your mortgage or not. So you want to plan for that. So those are some things that we would find um, that are apart. Nobody mentioned it so far, but most of us have at least one credit card. So you have a credit card payment. You're looking to make sure that that's a part of your monthly expenses. Some of you have car payments. If you have a car payment, please do include that as well. So those are just some examples. You want to get familiar with what you have coming in and those recurring expenses every month. From a monthly perspective, that's how we're going to come up with that budget. How much money is coming in every month and how much money is being spent. Groceries, <laughs> those are reoccurring monthly expenses. So that's what we're going to get a handle on. So if you can't pay the mortgage each month or find the cash that you may need to fix what's broken, your home will become a burden and not a blessing. And we don't want that for you. We want your home to be a blessing. So we want to help you here. And that's what I'm talking through with you today. We want to help you through getting a handle of your budget and making your money work for you.
Okay, and how are we going to go about doing that? Let's talk about six ways to get a handle on your budget. The first one is to change your television service. If you have another service other than Comcast or Verizon, jot it in the chat. Just put it in the chat how you may be handling your television service now. A lot of people re-examine this during this pandemic. They begin to say, hey, how else can I watch television? How else can I best utilize my money to be entertained? Because we've been home and we've probably watched more on TV than we have before. So anybody have any ways in which you have been able to change your television service and what you're now seeing on television? One of the things that come to mind for me, we use in our house, we use Netflix. Netflix has just an amazing array of shows that you can watch. It is a monthly fee to use Netflix. Um, but if you're just a movie watcher, that is an amazing source for you. Something else along those lines, Hulu. A lot of folks are doing that. These are streaming services. So one of the ways to change your television service is to go to a streaming service. So if you can think of any additional ways or anything that you've heard in terms of what folks do to change their television service, drop it in the chat. It may be a benefit to someone who's listening in. Number two, look at your food bill. I laugh a lot about growing up. We used to purchase a lot of what we call the generic or the store brand cereal and milk and macaroni and cheese. Well, guess what? It is nothing to be ashamed of. When you purchase the store brand, and oftentimes they're right next to the national brand. If you look at the Frosted Flakes, and then you looked at the next um, flakes <laughs> in the grocery store right next to it, the packaging almost even looks the same, but the price can be significantly different. So I want you to think about my food bill. What are you buying? Take a look. If you're using um, your debit card every month to go grocery shopping, just search that. Go right online, look for the store that you usually shop in and figure out what can you do to minimize your food bill. And that will help you to absolutely get a handle on your budget. And yes, I just wanted to back up to number one about the television service. Yes, Joe, Amazon TV stick. I do know a lot of folks who are using um the uh, Amazon stick, give me the name of it, but fire stick, that's it, fire stick, fire stick. So that is definitely another method to get many, 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 probably enough TV for uh, 10 people on a fire stick. So you should be good there too. So look at your food bill is number two. Number three is to cut every category just a little bit. So what do I mean by that? Once you do write down your expenses and you realize I'm spending this um, on each of these categories, what could you cut just a little bit? Earlier, um, one of the reoccurring items that were mentioned was insurance. Have you shopped recently for insurance? Have you compared what you currently have to something out there that's being offered? Have you looked at your insurance bill and said, wait a minute, I'm being, I'm not getting the good driver discount. I'm not getting the over 55 alive discount. So there are ways to reduce your car insurance. There might be ways to reduce your homeowner's insurance. Every year you should take a look at those types of things and see, can you cut that just a little? And you'd be surprised if you cut some of those things, you might find an extra hundred dollars a month that now you can put on the side of income. OK, so number three is cut every category you have just a little bit. And that might involve just doing some shopping around and oftentimes just picking up the phone and calling your insurance carrier and say, hey, I've been with you guys a couple of years. I was wondering if I could get a better rate with you. They may take a moment to take a look at what you have. And based on that, say, yeah, you know what? I think we can lower your monthly or your quarterly bill. Number four, switch. <laughs> switch to cash for your daily expenses. Now, um, as I mentioned, I am a financial coach through the Ramsey system. And with the Dave Ramsey system, there is an envelope system. And what happens with that system is you decide every week 
what you need to spend money on and you put it in cash and you literally put it in an envelope because there is something psychological when you have to go into the envelope and get $10 out and pay for lunch. Your brain then says, wait a minute, I just spent $10 on lunch. And every day as you have your allotment for the week, you begin to see that envelope getting empty and empty. And that's fine. It's just when it gets empty on Thursday and you had expected to have money by Friday, it allows you to reevaluate what are you really spending your money on? If you are the type to order out, are you spending money on Uber Eats? Are you spending money for delivery food? And if you are, you should be taking money out of that envelope. And as you see it disappear, maybe sooner than you expected, midweek versus on Saturday, it really gives you a chance to manage those daily expenses. Okay. If you're catching public transportation, you probably already have a monthly pass. If you're buying gas and you said in your mind, hey, I'm going to fill up my tank twice a month and you have your money in the envelope and the gas money is gone, it may have meant you had a super busy week and you've been driving around a lot, or you didn't go to the gas station, which gives you the best price. So if you switch to cash for your daily expenses, it's going to register in your mind much more quickly than it would if you were just using your debit card. So try that as a way to get a handle on your budget. Number five, work on paying off your debt. Now, we're our um, piece of what I train a lot of my uh, financial coaching clients are is the snowball um, debt elimination process. And you can learn that as well. I'm going to drop some links in the chat for you before we leave of some resources that you can uh, tap into that are free. Um, but you want to work off, work off paying off your debt. The snowball method is you're going to take the smallest bill that you have, pay that off, roll that payment into the next card. So whatever your debt is, you're still going to monthly pay those, but you're going to work real aggressively on the first one, which is your lowest credit card or the lowest debt that you may have. Once you pay that off, you go to the next one and the next one, and that's how we get that whole snowball effect. So work on paying off your debt. I know you're probably paying what you need to each month, but when you say to yourself, I'm going to aggressively work towards paying off this debt, you will begin to see that you're freeing up some monies that may um, not have been free before. If you're looking to purchase a home, it's going to lower your debt ratio, which is one of the items that mortgage lenders look at. So work on paying off your debt so that you can get a handle on your budget and that income will become more accessible to you as you eliminate that debt. And number six is find a way to cut back on big expenses. I shared this um, example with one of my clients the other day. Um, when my children were in school, they spent a good number of years in private school and parochial Catholic school. So what that meant is what? I was paying tuition. So one of the ways to cut back on a big expense like tuition is to try your best to find great public schools. And that might mean if you're renting, you might need to move to a different neighborhood just so you could be in the boundary lines of the better public schools. As you are looking to purchase a home, you want to do research on those schools. You should always strive to purchase a home in a neighborhood where you can send your children to that public school. So if schools are a factor in your family, you want to make sure that that is a priority as you are searching for your home, because that is a big expense that you don't get a tax break on at all. You want to make sure that once you make that decision to move forward to home ownership, that you consider schools if you have children that are going to school. Give me an example of another big expense. So tuition for um, middle and high school students, that's a big expense. What's going on right now with the colleges? Most of them are online, but some students are still living away from home. Parents have to make some hard decisions. <coughs> Excuse me. Will you bring those kids back home so that they can go to school online? What is the whole objective about paying for them 
to live in an apartment or on off campus housing when they are actually going to school online. So if you could take advantage of this academic year by eliminating that off campus housing or that campus housing bill. Those are big expenses that you may be able to shift to help pay down some debt. You may be able to shift it so that you can have more money in those envelopes. You may be giving your student an envelope so they can manage their debt. So now is the time to do as much research as you can for new and some inexpensive services, some insurances that may absolutely be um, not as inexpensive as they could be, look for some other services. And as, as you start to feel more comfortable with your budget, you'll be able to do some other things. So just kind of take it one step at a time um, to figure out how are some of these points that I've shared with you today can be applied to your um, personal situation. And yep, Monique, bring them back home. That off-campus apartment, um, that campus housing when they're really just in your dorm rooms, one line. Uh, my son is in his senior year and all of his classes are online. So there are a few schools um, who are doing kind of a hybrid, but most college students are learning online. So if that is an item in terms of the um, room and board that you can eliminate or reduce, Definitely look into that as one of the ways that you can get a handle on your budget in 2021. I'm going to copy these links and see if I could put them in the chat. OK, what I'm sharing with you here is. Um, this is a guide to budgeting. So if you are not sure how to start um your budgeting this is a great guide you can get set up relatively quickly and the next link i'm going to give is a guide for um, budgeting on an irregular income i'm one of those folks that fall into that category as a commissioned realtor my income changes from month to month right it just depends on what settlements occur so <clears throat> i'm not able to do a budget that shows the exact same amount coming in every month. So you may have a similar situation where your hours fluctuate. So your income might be different every month. So what I'm going to do is also jot for you uh, the link that shows you how you can budget when you have an irregular income. OK, so take a look at these. And hopefully you can copy them. They'll be up on the Facebook page if you don't get a chance to grab them now. But these are all part of the Dave Ramsey system, how to budget on an irregular income, as well as just a general guide to budgeting. Now, there's also um, an app that I use on my phone. Now, because I am a Ramsey um, certified financial coach, I actually use all of the systems that are available. And we have something called Every Dollar. It's an app. And I thought I had it um, on the screen, but I don't. But it's called Every Dollar. And I want you guys to take a look at that. It's available for you on um, Android and iPhones. It's called Every Dollar. It's an app that allows you to set a budget up in about 10 minutes. You're going to put your income, what your monthly income is, Jot down your expenses and boom, there's a budget prepared for you. You can continue to add as you remember. Um, it's a free service. You can use the free app. There's also a paid portion. The paid portion actually syncs with your bank account. That's the one that I use because I don't have um, the bandwidth to just continue to enter all of my spending manually. So it actually grabs your spending from your bank account and it drops it right into the app to show you where your money is going every month. So you say to yourself, well, I've tried this budget thing before. I'm going to ask you to try it again. It usually takes about three months, about 90 days for you really to get a handle of your budget because your expenses, they do fluctuate. So take an opportunity to see if any of what I've shared with you is going to work. And just remember, anything worth winning takes work. And I hope that you are in a position to win this year in 2021. 
by getting a handle on your budget, whether you have plans to purchase a home, whether you have plans to refinance your home, whether you have plans to just make your living in your current home more comfortable by freeing up some of your cash. And these are some of the suggestions that I wanted to share with you, some of these tips. If they were helpful, please jot it in the comment that they were helpful, that they were on point, that these were some great tips. And I'm hoping that once you had a chance to share this with some of your family and friends, that they will find this to be beneficial. I'm also going to leave in uh, the comments when I go back to Facebook. If you're interested in talking more about your budget and how I may be able to work with you as a financial coach, we can set up a quick call to talk about that. If you are looking to purchase a home this year, I'd love to also talk with you more about how I can help you with that. So I am going to go ahead and drop both of those Calendly links. Um, I also tweaked my Facebook page today, so you should be able to click um, and book an appointment through Facebook as well. And we will look forward to chatting with each other Thank you so much, Pat. I'm glad that the points and those links were great. And definitely click on them. Share them with your friends. Thanks, Joe. Winning does require work. And that budget, it is something that we just all have to revisit quarterly, twice a year. It's the beginning of the year. And I'm hoping that you're going to take just an hour or so to gather all of your numbers, look back and see what you have and how you can make that work for you. And I'm glad that those links were great. Look out for the links that I'll put after we jump, jump off of this live, where you can schedule some time to meet with you. Once again, if you're just joining us, my name is Gersha Porter. I am the CEO of Porter Premier Homes of Cummings and Company Realtors. I eliminate confusion for buyers by giving them key strategies to unlock resources to buy their dream home. And I help sellers to move towards the next chapter in their life as well. You can feel free to shop for your dream home at porterpremierhomes.com. Look forward to seeing you again. And thanks so much for hopping on today. Have an amazing rest of the week. Bye-bye.